A fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high old silver, the Lone Ranger. faithful Indian companion Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoof beats of a great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Oh, Silver, let's go, big fellow. I'm Silver. The Lone Ranger and Tonto were camped in a cave at the bottom of a ravine, the floor of which was washed by a narrow, deep stream of water. It was a large cavern, large enough to admit not only the men, but their horses. The masked man and his Indian companion, Tonto, had ridden far that day, and they, as well as the horses, were tired. Suddenly, Silver became restless. Something's troubling the big fellow, Tonto. Isn't that right? Steady there, boy. What's the trouble? There now, quiet down. Silver sometimes act like watchdog. Yes. I wonder if he's trying to tell us something. Bobby, that gunshot. That's right. Come out to the mouth of the cave. Ah, it's sound from north of here. Mighty dark. Ah, sky overcast. No moon. No star. I don't suppose there's any use trying to investigate that shot tonight. Um, maybe take a look around more now. Just a minute, Toto. Listen. See if you can hear any hoofbeats. You hear that? Yes. Something fell into the river. Ah. That north of here, too. It's a horse. It's going away. A shot, a splash, and a horse. I wonder what that means. It was the following afternoon when the man called Barton rode into the town of Land's End, about ten miles west of the canyon. He dismounted in front of a small, square, one-story building that served as the express office. Well, I didn't expect to see a lady in charge. Oh, I'm not in charge, sir. Who is? My husband, Jimmy Stevens. He's in the back room right now. I'll call him if you want to see him. Uh, please do. It's very important. Just a moment. Hi, Molly. Uh, Jimmy, there's a man to see you, and he says it's very important. Doggone, I wish I knew who was important. Does he look like one of the company officials? He might be. He's well-dressed, and he's a stranger. Maybe he'll be the one that can make this job permanent for you. Oh, wouldn't that be wonderful? Oh, you know, Molly, this job is my big chance. If I can just show Wells Fargo that I can handle Land's End office, 
They might not send anyone to replace old Abe. Jimmy, you're keeping that man waiting. Uh, it's all gone. I forgot him. I go right out. It might be better if you talk to him in here. No, oh, no. Not with so much cash on hand. One of the first things I'm going to do if I get any authority here is to get a good iron safe instead of a cash drawer. Well, you'd better go out and see the stranger. Yeah. You wait here, will you, honey? Yes. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. You in charge here? Well, I am right now. What can I do for you? My name is Barton, Sam Barton. You should have had a letter about me. Golly, Mr. Barton, there might have been a letter. Might have been. Don't you know? Well, you see, the man that had charge of this office died a couple of weeks ago. And I've been in charge since then. Oh. I don't know much about the letters Abe had before he died. I was his assistant, but he never told me much about things. Uh, temporary here, is that it? I hope it'll be permanent. Mm. Up to you, huh? Up to you to do the job right. That's about it. Well, I'll save you looking up the letter. Here are my credentials. You can see that I'm a special detective sent out here by Wells Fargo to check on things. There's a lot of cash goes through this office. Yes, sir. The whole payroll for that railroad gang goes through here, doesn't it? That's right, sir. Hmm. Take your time. Look those papers over and satisfy yourself that I'm who I claim to be. I am. I hope you don't take offense. Well, I'd think you were careless if you did otherwise. Your, uh, your name is Stevens, isn't it? Yes, sir. Jim Stevens. Well, I'm glad to know you. Glad to know you, Mr. Barton. Yeah, now, would you sit down? Here's your credentials. Mm. I reckon they're all right. Well, thank you. Now, I'll get right to the point. Right, sir. I suppose you wonder why I came in. Well, I figured you'd tell me sooner or later. Well, the fact is, we've had information about a robbery that's going to be attempted. A robbery? Yes. Robbery of the railroad payroll from this office by a man named Durkin. Durkin? I never heard of it. Well, he hasn't worked in this part of the country very much. The law caught up with a pal of his, and this pal talked and told what Durkin's plans were. I see. How long do you have the payroll in this office? Well, generally, not more than one night. It comes in on the stage one day and is picked up by the railroad company the next. When is the next payroll due? Well, as a matter of fact, uh, is uh, is the cash in your office now? Well, I... That is, uh... But if that's the case, this crook is likely to make his play for the money tonight. How often does the payroll come out here? Every two weeks. Tonight's the night, then. I'll bet my shirt on it. It's a good thing I got here in time. Tonight? Yes. <laughs> Who's that? Molly! Oh, there they go. I see him. Who is it? A masked man. He's riding over that way. Oh, Jimmy. Jimmy, what does it mean? I don't know. Where'd you see him, Molly? What was he doing? I was just sitting here. I, I sort of felt as if someone was in the room with me. I turned around and then I saw this man's face. He was at the window. Which window? That one right there. He was standing beside his horse. He could see the cash box? Yes, but of course it was closed. Oh, oh Molly, this is Mr. Barton. He's a detective for Wells Fargo. Oh, a detective? Yes. Did you get a look at the man's face? Yes. That is, I saw his mouth and chin. The upper part of his face was masked. Masked? That must Are be... you sure of that man? Oh, yes, sir. I'm sure of it, Mr. Barton. He had a black mask across his eyes. Mr. Barton was telling about a crook named Durkin that plans to steal the payroll. Oh, Jimmy, if you lose that money... I don't aim to lose it. Forewarned is forearmed. That's the idea, Stevens. Forewarned. Just let him make his play. We'll be ready for him. I... I'm trembling like a leaf. The sight of that mask, man. I, I was frightened. I can understand that, ma'am. But don't you worry. Don't you worry about a thing. I've come a long way to catch Durkin. And if he tries to rob you, we'll catch him in the act. Molly's father was a grizzled veteran of many an Indian fight in the West. Later that afternoon, he listened attentively while the girl told about the masked man and the plans that Jim and Barton had made. They plan to set a trap to catch this man if he comes tonight. Oh, trap my eye. What's the West coming to? I'm worried about it, Pa. That masked man knows I saw him. He'll figure that there'll be a trap, and it's just as Jimmy says, forewarned is forearmed. If he knows there's a trap, he'll have a plan to avoid it. Why, sure he will. 
What's more, that's no way to catch a crook. In my day, when we seen a crook, we trailed the critter down. We didn't lay back and wait for him to come and stick his neck in a noose. We went out with the noose a swing and dropped it over his head. Then used the same dang busted noose to string him up. Yeah, that's the way to handle crooks. I, I didn't tell Jimmy I was going to speak to you about this. Yeah, it's just as well, daughter. Uh, <clears throat> you say this masked armory was looking in the window at the office? Yes. Which window? South or north one? South one. Mm, I recollect there's soft dirt there. He likely left tracks. Oh, yes, he must have left tracks. Then them tracks will hang him, my ginger. Oh, it like it, old Chris. There's a dog that can follow a scent from here to kingdom come. Here, Chris. Come in here, boy. Quiet down, now, now, now. Quiet down, Chris. Me and you got a job on our hands. We're going crook hunting. The Lone Ranger and Tonto had made their camp in the woods near the town. They were there when they heard the barking of a dog and the approach of a horse. That's a hound dog, Tonto. Ah. Him come this way. Probably trailing something. That fellow on horse follow dog. Come this way. So he is. I see him. On the move. Him come here. Here, boy. Here. Steady there. Steady down. I got Steady you covered. Boy. Don't move around for all your head off. Oh, yeah, now, that's a good dog. Quiet, boy, steady. Take it easy. Get away from him, Chris. You know better than to get friendly with a masked crook. Good dog you have there, stranger. Never mind the dog. Heist your hands, Durkin. You're my prisoner. You too, Injun. Dead ratted, Chris. Get away from him. Is your dog usually as friendly as this with strangers? Not by a jugful. <laughs> We're friends, aren't we, Chris, old boy, huh? Now you get your hands up like I said. I'm not fooling. Oh. Perhaps you're not, but I think you're mistaken about my identity. I know who you are. Your name is Durkin, and you're a robin thief that's come here to bust into the express office. Well, you won't get that chance. Now get your hands up. My name isn't Durkin, and I'm not here to... Well, not just a minute. Who are you? None of your doggone business. You might be Durkin. Me? Why, hang it and blast it all! Where did you hear about Durkin? My daughter told me. Oh. Her husband's in charge of the express office. And Mr. Barton of the Wells Fargo come and warned us that you was around here. And then my girl seen you. I wondered if I had frightened her. I'm sorry. Being sorry won't help you none. I got Chris on your trail and he found you. Now you're heading for jail. I'm sorry, but I can't go to jail right now. Oh, you can't, huh? Well, you're going. And what's more, you're taking off that mask. I'll have a look at your face. You said a man from Wells Fargo was here. He is. He's watching for you. Too bad he didn't come here instead of you. There's nothing he'd do that I won't. Now, I got no more time to waste and talk. You're the father of the man who runs express office, huh? Father of his wife. Then let me show you something. I think this will identify me. Huh? What is it? Here, take a look. Catch. Uh, hey! And he got him. Let go of me. Steady there. Don't fire your gun just for the sake of firing it. Might hit the dog. Oh, 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 oh. Quiet, boy, quiet. And he got done. Get him, Chris. Get him. Easy, Chris. Easy. I have the dog, Tonto. We'll have to tie you, Chris. We don't want either you or your master to get hurt. I'll kill you for this. You won't get away with it. Blasted all the tarnation. I should have known that trick. You tossed me something, then jumped me when my eyes were off you. I wanted to show you who I was, that's all. I'll pick up what I tossed at you. Here it is. A bullet. Silver bullet. Won't mean a thing to me. You're a crook. Your name is Durkin. You're aiming to rob the express office. Now quiet down. Let me tell you what I know about Durkin. I won't listen. Very well, then. <laughs> Good dog here. Uh, well, go on. Go on? What do you mean? What about Durkin? <laughs> That's better. You can let go of him now, Tonto. Uh. Just keep his gun so he can't grab it suddenly. We'll uh, let him sit down and hear what we have to say. Ah, uh, you sit there. I'll sit. But I'm giving you fair warning. I'll take you into the jail as a prisoner if it's the last thing I do. I'll take you in on, on, on general principles till you get that mask off and show your face. <clears throat> now, go on. What about Durkin? The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. 
Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. to continue our story. Jim Stevens spent the afternoon with a man called Barton, who had warned him about an eastern thief named Durkin. The two had discussed their plans for trapping Durkin when he came to get the railroad payroll. And then the talk turned to other things. What you say is downright interesting, Mr. Barton. That sure must be an exciting life. Traveling all over the country, protecting the Wells Fargo officers. Interesting, perhaps, but sometimes very dangerous. Now, take this man, Durkin. I've never seen the man. Don't have any idea what he looks like. Molly gave us a pretty fair description of him. Yes. I wonder if he'll be afraid to come back tonight. He must know that you're on the job. We'll see. That's the best way. Just wait and see. Don't suppose he'll show up before dark, will he? It's not likely. I... Jimmy? Jimmy, I, I'm scared. Oh, now, Molly, Listen, honey. Lord, Pa, he took Chris and went out to try and track down that masked man. He hasn't come back. Uh, maybe we should report to the sheriff's office, Mr. Barton. Oh, that's Chris. Yeah. Chris? Chris, where are you? Molly. Oh, oh. Pa, oh, you're safe, thank goodness. Hey, Pa, are you all right? I look to be all right, don't I? Well, where were you? We thought... That is, I was worried. I told Jimmy and Mr. Barton that we... Mm, told him, did you? Mm. What did you learn by your tracking and trading? Nothing much. I reckon Chris ain't the hound he was five years ago. Didn't you find Durkin? Nope, never seen hide in a hair of him. Well, now that your father is back, we can go ahead with our plans for tonight, Jim. Yeah, I reckon we can. What are your plans? We're staying in the office, Molly. Mr. Barton and I. We leave all the lights out and sit and wait in case that thief comes. I want to get him with the goods, you see, ma'am. Why, want to borrow Chris? No, we don't want the thief to be scared away until he gets into the safe and gets the cash in his pockets. Hmm. Then we'll have a good airtight case against him. I tell you in my... I'll day... see that Pa doesn't interfere. Come on, Pa. All right, but I still don't like this way of catching crooks. Come on, Chris. There's no use for anything that we can do. Oh, 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 oh. Now then, Stevens, we'll check our plans. Whatever you say, Mr. Barton. Let me look the inside room over. Right. I'll lock this door before we go in there. That's a good idea. There. Now, come on in here, Barton. Yeah. Close that door, will you? Yes. There's the cash box. Window there. One there. That's likely the way he'll try to get in. The window? Yes. We'll get set before it gets dark. Then we can just wait. Seems to me it'd be smart to let the sheriff in on this. Stevens, when you've been trailing and running down crooks as long as I have, you'll learn that too many people can spoil a trap. The safest thing is to let no one know what our plan is. And there's no chance for a leak, you see. Yeah, it'd mean my job if we lost this payroll. Of course it would. Now, uh, you crouch under that window, and I'll wait under this one, you see. All right. If shooting is needed, let me do it. Now, get to your place, settle yourself in a good position, and keep quiet. <laughs> We've been here an hour, don't you think, Barton? Uh, just about an hour. But we may have to wait half a night. So don't get impatient. It's mighty tiresome, ain't it? Quiet. Huh? 
How long is it now, Barton? Shh, don't talk. Can't tell when the cook will be sneaking up. I figure it to be two hours now. You're getting tired? Go to sleep if you want to. Oh, no, no. I'm not sleeping on this job. The minutes dragged heavily for Jimmy Stevens. He found his muscles cramped, and several times in the third and fourth hour of silent waiting in the dark, he caught himself dozing. I mustn't sleep on this job. I gotta get that crook. I gotta get him. Finally, the tense voice of the man called Barton broke the stillness. Stevens. <laughs> oh, yeah. Someone's moving around outside. There is? I saw him sneaking up toward the window on this side. It's about time. We're ready for him. Remember what I said. Let him get the cash. Right. I'll follow your lead, Barton. Go ahead now. He's moving up close. Jimmy saw the black outline of a man's head and shoulders rise against the square of dull night glow at the window. And he heard the window being opened. Prowler rose above the sill, then dropped to the floor where he could not be seen in the darkness. The faintest scraping sounds told of the thief's movement across the floor. Then a soft creak indicated that the cash box was being opened. Jimmy Stevens tensed every muscle for the leap in the battle as the figure appeared once more at the window. Then Barton cried out. All right, I got you. I'm with you, Barton. No! <laughs> Hey, he slipped away. Get him. He's gotten out. How's Billy? He smashed me in the face. I'm half blind. Miss him. Stand aside, Barton. You're blocking me so I can't shoot. I'll get him this time. Let him get away. Stand aside. Let me shoot. Oh, uh, Stevens, he made it. He's gone. Hey, get away. Confound my shooting. Why couldn't I have dropped him? Why didn't I shoot to kill him instead of trying with his legs? We've got to get after him. Uh, get a light, Jim. Get a light going. We'll see if he did get the cash. Now, just a second. I'll have the lamp going. If you'd have only let me jump him while he was at the cash. Now what'll we do? Uh, keep your head, boy. That's the main thing. Yeah, there's the light. And look. He's cleaned out the drawer. Yeah, that's bad. But don't give up hope. I'm a good man at trailing a crook. I'll catch up with him. My job's as good as gone now. Well, that's Molly. Jimmy? Oh, Jimmy, I heard shooting. Are you all right? Molly, the cash is gone. Durkin got away with it. What, what's that? Got away with it, did he? Yeah. Well, how'd that happen, Barton? Well, Jimmy closed in on him and got smashed in the face. Oh, Jimmy. I fired, but missed him. I'll get started after him right away. I wouldn't be in too much of a hurry. Hey, you, what? That's him. Put your hands up. The mask man. Take it easy. Get the gun from both those men, Toto. We don't want any more gunplay. Uh, gun. You've got plenty of nerve coming back here like this. How did the thief get in and out of here? You ought to know that. Right through that window. In that case, there should be footprints beneath the window. Well, not on that side. It's hard ground. No, Molly. The ground is soft beneath both windows. There was some water spilled there. So the tracks of anyone who went out either window could be seen. What? Say, what's your game? Jim, I told your father my identity. That's right, Jimmy. He told me who he is... And who that man is. My name is Barton. You see, Jimmy and Molly, the Lone Ranger... The Lone Ranger? Oh, that's right. The Lone Ranger heard a shot last night. Then he heard something splash in the river east of here. This morning, he found the trail that Barton's horse had made up to the river. Then seen where there'd been a rumpus. Then he found the body of a man that had been shot, washed ashore downstream. Well, the tracks of the horse went from the river to here. Uh, hold on, old man. You keep calling this mask, man, the Lone Ranger. All you have is his word for it. That's enough for me. I see he's a thief. He's a man I fired at. The man who got away. Just let me search him for the money. Stay where you are. Now, just a second. Keep quiet, Jim. I'll finish the story. Tonto read the trail of the horse we followed. One man rode the horse to the canyon. There was a shot. And the man was killed. A different man rode the horse away from the river... And here to town. <laughs> As if you could tell that by the trail. Oh, me tell it. That trail told a lot. The man who rode into Land's End is a killer. 
I didn't know who it was until you told us that a crook named Durkin was on his way here. You, no, you keep quiet. I'm hey, not. Look out, Sam. That's it, son. Don't let that critter see your blade. Maybe that'll keep his mouth shut. Durkin was on the way here, and he knew that Barton was after him. Durkin waited, killed Barton, and stole Barton's horse and credentials. Great day. Why, that'd mean that... Why, you're calling this man Durkin. Right. It's a lie. It's a lie, I tell you. Right fun it is. Your name is Durkin. You came here with a plan to rob this office. That's not true. I, I don't think you're right, mister. I saw the man come in the window. You saw a man rise up against the window. But how could you tell whether he was inside the room or outside? How do you know he wasn't in the room all the time? What? Why, golly, I never thought of that. Anyone that came through that window would have left tracks. Durkin, you took the cash and made believe you struggled with the thief. In the darkness, you stunned Jim temporarily. So he couldn't notice that you fired at nothing at all. It's a lie. It's a lie, I tell you. Pardon if it's a lie. There'll be footprints outside that window. I'll hold the lamp out the window and take a look. Meanwhile, I'll see what Barton or Durkin or whatever his name is has in his pocket. Uh, get away from me. Get back, I tell you. You can't do this. Oh, who can? <laughs> What's this? No, no, wait, listen. I... A hat. He had it under his vest. That's the hat he used when he wanted to change his silhouette. That don't prove a thing. You didn't find any money in my pockets. Pa? Pa, what are you doing? Just a second. I'm reaching for something outside of this window. Did you see any footprints out there? Keep an eye on this man, Toto. No, uh. no footprints, but look at this. Look at here. Found this sack beneath the window. It wasn't there when we went down the ground. What's in it? What? Look at this, Jim. This here's your cash. That settles everything. If there's no footprints, it means one of us had to drop the cash from the window. Either you, Barton, or me. And I know it wasn't me. All right, you get me. What are you going to do about it? I'll do plenty, and here's the start. Why, you... That'll do, Jim. If I had a gun, I'd kill him. That's why we took your gun. Durkin is wanted alive. I'll take charge of the snake. He's got a hanging waiting for him. And quite a few rewards are waiting for the capture of him. Jim, I don't think you'll have any trouble proving that his name is Durkin. Then you can collect those rewards. Oh, no, no. Those rewards belong to you. That's right. You're the one that earned them. Molly's father will help you decide what to do with the cash, Jim. Come on, Tonto. Don't need us around here. Uh -huh. Hey, now, wait a minute. Adios, Jim. Good luck to you. Well, Durkin, time we were starting for the Calaboo. I'll go with you, Dad. You can come along if you want to. But me and Chris can handle Durkin. So that was the Lone Ranger. Sure enough, Molly. And <laughs> my dog knew it before I did. <laughs> when I seen old Chris making up with a stranger... I knew that there was something downright unusual about the situation. just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.